Good morning, afternoon, welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to start around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. This is another EPL breakdown for Wednesday, January 30th, 2019, Match Week 24, Part 2. Three talking points I want to touch on very quickly. The first talking point is that this is a four-game slate. What that means is that there's not as many options and you're going to have to have a really small player pool and try most in most cases to go over ownerships that may be on the field. Second talking point: four game slate, but there's three teams that stand out from the from the rest: Liverpool, Chelsea, and Spurs. And none of these three teams play each other. So what that means is any of the teams that are not those three teams is going to be extremely depressed in price on both sides. And the third talking point is just like last slate: a value keeper is in play, and we're going to be able to take a massive stand here in a team that's going to draw massive ownerships and what my hope is going to be for a massive mistake for everyone that jumps on board so let's jump on to jump into this right away excuse me first game on the slate we have Chelsea traveling to Bournemouth second game we have Crystal Palace traveling to Southampton third game Leicester traveling to Liverpool and the final game is Watford traveling to Spurs and like I said the Liverpool Leicester Watford Spurs games are the late games of the slate so if you are filling a flex spot make sure it comes from these two games first game on the slate Chelsea at Bournemouth first point you want to take from this game both teams are going to score there's not going to be a clean sheet from this game so it's important to make sure to fade both goaltenders whichever keeper Bournemouth happened to start this is not the value keeper that you want to go after and in terms of high salary keepers uh, Kepa isn't the Kepa isn't the salary you want to go after either now for defenders what's important to look at for like I said in this slate there's going to be a lot of very depressed prices in terms of a player's skill or ability may not add up exactly to the salary and in a lot of cases you can just ignore who the opponent is and stand up to their skill and overall ability and say they're too cheap, we can play them. The first player on that list is Nathaniel Klein from Bournemouth uh, for only 4.2k. Former Liverpool player. He gets a lot of his peripherals from defensive stats so you don't have to worry about him getting crosses. He's going to get his floor from what he normally does and if anything have a slight uptick in the floor as long as he doesn't take a yellow card or take a lot of fouls which he's never been known to do. So I have absolutely no issue with Nathaniel Klein. He's a very plus EV player in this game because no matter what happens, he's not going to lose points as long as he's playing adequately. He's just going to do what he does, and he may see, if, like I said, an uptick in just general uh, exposure coming the other way at him. So I, I really don't mind Nathaniel Klein at all. Now, in terms of Chelsea, the main thing for me in Chelsea this game is going to be Hazard, obviously, but how to stack with him. And that, a lot of that depends on how they start. Now, for the past little while, Hazard has been playing as the, the main forward, the main center forward, with uh, William on the left and Pedro on the right. And Hazard is naturally and preferably for himself. He prefers to play on the left-hand side, which is just where William prefers to play. Now, William can't play on the right, but he's far less effective on the right, and Pedro usually ends up as the odd man out. Now, I'm saying that with mind that Higuain should be coming in and playing this slate whether he starts or just comes on as a sub at some point he should be seeing the field on top of that they do have Giroud as well it's just too bad that he doesn't his playing style doesn't really fit what Chelsea needs now for years and years Chelsea has been a team that just if they have two forwards they sub one off for the other one plays 60 minutes the other plays 40 minutes so neither Higuain nor Giroud should be a very viable target this slate and if Hazard does start up front he he doesn't really, I mean, as the center forward, he doesn't really have that great of stacking options. Now, if Higuain does start as the center forward, you can risk him in some GPP, but ideally you want to keep him on on the fade list this slate. Just wait to see how his minutes start to stack up. If he starts logging full 90 minutes, then we can jump on him more consistently. But for now, maybe keep him as like the most deepest of GPP flyers. A lot of people are still going to be jumping on him because he is such a popular name. So I'm not too interested yet in terms of Higuain. 
Uh, but depending where Hazard starts, if he does start on the left with Higuain up top, you can take Hazard with Alonso. I don't mind that. It definitely is my favorite play from this game. I think uh, Azpilicueta makes more sense as a solo flyer over that stack and just try and hope to get six to nine fantasy points, which isn't necessarily a lot. But given the small slate, that really shouldn't ruin you too much from 5K. I would prefer Azpilicueta in cash and Alonso in GPP, though a lot of people may go the other way around. And the reason for that is because I prefer taking Alonso with Hazard if he's starting on the left. Um, the main thing for me is that GPP isn't really overly viable by himself, i.e. Alonso isn't viable by himself because you really need that clean sheet. Uh, and if you're not getting that clean sheet, you may as well just go with Azpilicueta and try and catch maybe nine fantasy points. Uh, in terms of the midfield, like I was just speaking on, Hazard, if he starts at left, if he's starting up front, it's a little bit more risky, but you kind of have to take him by himself in that case, where if he's starting at left, you can stack him. Now, in terms of Bournemouth, I think Ryan Frazier is someone you're going to have to look at this slate from only 7.8k in DraftKings. He's just too cheap. He's playing way too well, one of the better players in the league, and Chelsea are most likely going to concede. It's hard to know where Ryan Frazier is going to get his points, but he's always the kind of player that seems to get his. Uh, more times than not double digits cash I'm not really as excited about I would more take him as a single flyer in GPP now you can stack him but ideally the situation here is that we would like Callum Wilson not to play at all and it's just Josh King and you know you can get 90 minutes of Josh King with Ryan Frazier which taking those two is a really interesting stack this late. Now, in terms of if Callum Wilson is on the bench, you have to be a little bit more worry, wary because you know he's coming on for someone. And if Callum Wilson and Josh King played together, you can probably assume that Callum Wilson is coming off at some point. He's facing a late fitness game, a fitness test this game, excuse me. So if he does happen to play, it won't be for very long. Uh, if he is on the bench, you can probably assume he's coming on at some point, especially if Bournemouth are looking for a goal, which they most likely will be. So I think the, the logical scoreline here is probably 2-1 Chelsea, 3-1 Chelsea. I don't necessarily see this being a massive game stack game. Take one side or the other. Try and stack uh, Hazard on the left-hand side with Alonso if you can. Maybe take Hazard just as the single flyer up front. Take Azpilicueta in cash if you'd like. It's definitely not my favorite cash play. And then the Bournemouth side, Ryan Frazier works as either just a single flyer in GPP or look to stack him with a Josh King that can possibly get 90 minutes and don't take him if he's not for sure going to get 90 minutes or if uh Callum Wilson's on the field you can definitely take Josh King with Ryan Frazier and know uh that Callum Wilson's going to be taking that sub off the field so let's say 3-1 Chelsea just to be a little bit more realistic uh but all three goals could be really random it wouldn't even surprise me to see a couple center back goals this game on either side maybe uh, Nathan Aki uh or uh David Luiz uh, it's I don't even know I should double check to make sure David Luiz has actually been playing recently uh, because I, I honestly haven't. I can't see why he wouldn't be. Yeah, exactly. Taking cards and everything too. Why not? So yeah, uh, center back goal, Nathan Aki calling it here. 2-1, uh, 3-1 Chelsea. Second game of the slate, we have Crystal Palace traveling to Southampton. Excellent game. I think this is jam-packed. Both sides of the formats, both sites, I think you can get away with lots of different options. In terms of the goaltenders, I'm not really interested unless there is a big unless here. One, Angus Gunn starts. If Angus Gunn starts, you can jump on the Southampton side and hope he makes a lot of saves, lets it no more than a goal. Uh, the second side of that is if it's uh, a Crystal Palace, I'm not really that interested. You could take it as a, a bigger flyer than uh, Southampton keeper not named Angus Gunn, uh, but I'm just not, I'm interested in goals on both sides of this game. Uh, the defense, it'll be interesting to see what Southampton are going to do because they're quite injured. But uh, in terms of uh, Yan Valery is going to be coming back from suspension, only 3.7K. Looks like he's going to be getting all the right wing, uh, right back time now with Suarez uh, gone to, uh, where is he sent to again? Uh, I think uh, Inter? Yeah, Inter Milan. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, it, it should be Valerie at wide now for the most uh, parts. 
And in terms of the Crystal Palace side, you can take really Juan Bissaka and Cash for 4.8k. Not a problem at all. Wouldn't even mind both of them in the same cash card. Or in GPP, you can go with Van Anholt. He could snake a goal from a long shot. It would absolutely, especially if it's no Angus gun, then that really wouldn't surprise me. Uh, he takes more than enough shot attempts in the last few games in 90 minutes. So this game could just as easily finish 0-0 with low efficiently low efficient scoring chances and goaltenders making lots of saves it could very easily finish 3-2 with absolutely no saves by keepers whatsoever so i am very interested the more forward you go and like i was saying here we can get some depressed prices in uh townsend and ward prowse townsend especially is someone who i'm considering for cash you can get away with him in either format but uh, i think he makes for one of the better cash plays this slate uh, and Ward Prowse falls in the exact same zone. I don't even mind them both in the same cash card since it is a four game slate. Uh, I think both of them make for excellent options. Now, Southampton, you can never really be sure who they're going to start, so Ward Prowse may not even end up starting. In that case, just re- roll with the Townsend. Um, it, you can stack either side if you want to go Valerie Ward Prowse it isn't necessarily a correlative stack but in this situation when there's so many goals you just want to be on one side of a team here to make sure you get on the side of the goals uh, Zaha I think makes sense from only 6.1k he's back so there's absolutely no worrying that he he should be an AK player I'm very surprised he's not at least AK this late uh, as always maybe DraftKings knows something I don't but for the time being, uh, Zaha is playing way better than 6.1K. And I have absolutely no issue. In all honesty, in either format. But I think he makes for one of the stronger GPP plays of the slate. And getting him and Ryan Frazier into a GPP card is a really interesting way to start, in my opinion. Um, the same can easily be said again for Milicevic. Uh He's a little bit too expensive for me. But uh, if... Palace is, like I said, I've talked about this in a few different videos now. Palace just play for penalties. It's one of the things they do. They just try and constantly search for penalty shots to win games. And Milicevic is literally the beneficiary of that. He has an EPL lead, uh, like 14 penalty shot goals in the past two seasons. So, yeah, don't be afraid to rest on him. Uh, I'm a little, I would rather go up with Townsend or below it was Zaha in cash. But in GPP, I think Milicevic makes for a really interesting stacking option with someone else, whether it be all three, Zaha and Millie, or or uh, one of the defenders. And maybe even if you want to chase a clean sheet and it's not Angus Gunn, I don't hate that idea. Uh, because Palace have been playing very, very, very well, even away from home, which is a, a surprise generally across the entire league. And for forwards, I'm really not that interested. Maybe Nathan Redmond. He's been playing very well as of late. I don't even mind playing him in either format, but in, in terms of what I'm really looking for, I would much rather keep him to uh, a flyer at best for either format and uh, probably go with the Crystal Palace side. I see this game finishing. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, it could very easily finish 1-1. One, one. I don't necessarily see a winner. Maybe I'm just snake bitten after years and years of seeing Southampton not outright win games. But for the time being, I don't really see a winner this game. If there will be a winner, I see it being Crystal Palace. So they've just been playing well enough as of late to deserve that kind of consideration. Now, in terms of picks, uh, just quickly going over again, Juan Bissaka, Cash, Van Anhal, GPP, Zaha, you can get away with either, but I think he makes for an excellent GPP play. Milicevic and GPP, maybe in Cash if you follow them, but we wouldn't hate it. Hate it excuse me. Townsend for Cash, preferably a GPP if you're stacking him with either Zaha or Milicevic. And then up front, uh, I really have no interest in on the Palace side. And for Southampton, uh, Valerie, I think Valerie makes for an excellent play for either format, really, because of his salary so cheap uh, if he starts on the right wing. Uh, in the mid, you can go George, James Ward-Prowse. Even Holberg has a really solid floor, which I don't hate. Uh, six point or six K, excuse me, on the dot dot is a little bit expensive for me. But uh, if you're really falling on it again. I can think of a lot worse options. So, uh, in general, this whole game is stacked outside the forwards for both teams. I'm really not interested in any of the forwards. Uh, so, yeah. 2-2. Two, two. 
uh, 1-1, maybe 2-1 Crystal Palace. All the goals coming from the, the midfielders kind of thing. Maybe Zaha with a goal and assist if we're lucky. Third game of the state, we we have Leicester at Liverpool. Not really much needs to be said here um, outside of the notion that Smichael isn't the value keeper as well. He isn't the person you want to go with. Uh, you can tell laying six goals in the past two games against the likes of Southampton Wolves isn't exactly where you want to go. Leicester are actually one of the worst teams in the league at the moment. They're coming up against Liverpool, who with a win will really cement a serious title chance uh, as long as they don't let it slip. Uh, City failing to find a result yesterday against Man City is huge. So this could be really big for Liverpool if they can pull off the win. If you're going to go with an expensive keeper, you may as well just go with Allison. I don't love it because of his salary, but he's probably the safest clean sheet of the entire slate. With Trent Alexander-Arnold out, that's actually a major step down. I think that's going to draw a lot of ownership from people looking to jump on that right back, whoever it may be. And it could see, so yeah, it, it's tough to say with Joe Gomez out too. Uh, so yeah, it, Camacho. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what they do. We may be able to get a super value play here. Interesting. There we go. So yeah, good jump on some Camacho. Then some 3.8 love too. That could be a really sharp play this slate. I don't see a lot of people jumping on that. As I I'm still learning the slate obviously this morning too. So yeah, that's a, a lot of to take in at 3.8k. I don't hate it obviously. It's too bad you won't get the clean sheet. Uh, but... For cash, really, what do you really need at the end of the day? And uh, I think that more than adds up. Um, now, how do we want to attack the midfields for Liverpool? Uh, basically, I'm just going to be using Salah exclusively. Just Salah, Salah. Dude, to me, there's no real reason to look at anyone else. Maybe that now is the time to jump on Mane for an extra couple of goals uh, for a brace. But, yeah, it, for me, it's just Salah. May as well stick on the Salah train. Um Cash, GPP, try and go over. He's probably going to be the play of the slate, basically, is what I'm trying to get across here. Uh, Leicester aren't completely void of options, despite being really bad. Jamie Vardy just tends to show up against big teams. I know a lot of people hate hearing narratives like that, but I'm sure if you... I know... Let me rephrase that. He tends to show up a lot when he plays in London. So... Maybe that won't hold as much credence this late where he's going up against the likes of Liverpool looking to really cement their title chase chances. But for 4.4K, I think every single one of us here knows Jamie Vardy is better than 4.4K. Um, we all know Liverpool are good, but yeah, 90 minutes. You can't go wrong here. I have no issue with Jamie Vardy, 4.4K. Uh, get him in at least a one or two GPPs this slate. Uh, you probably won't regret it if he finishes six to eight fantasy points. That's all you really need. And that isn't that many shots on net. Uh, especially the, this counter could catch Liverpool by surprise. Leicester love to play by the counter. And they don't necessarily suffer against teams unless they're being countered against. And I don't necessarily see Liverpool sitting back and letting uh, Leicester attack and then trying to counter. So we, uh, we're probably going to see four goals from Liverpool. Maybe a goal from Jamie Vardy if you're lucky. But stick to Salah for probably the safer multi-point player of the slate. Uh, I'll say 4-0 uh, four, four Liverpool, 4-1 maybe Maybe even 4-2. But uh, yeah, four goals for Liverpool is definitely my take from this game. Final game of the slate. I am so... I'm playing this slate because of this game. Uh, normally, I would just try and sleep right through this. But this slate deserves playing because of this game. Watford traveling to Spurs. I am so excited for this. Very quickly break it down. Ben Foster, play of the slate. Get him into your cards. The reason for this is no Harry Kane... Spurs, in general, 
I don't even have to talk about Watford. Quick word on Watford. Fade Holobos because he's only crossing the ball a handful of times. Uh, maybe if you want to take some clever, cleverly, I think he makes for a really, really interesting uh, GPP play this slate. And up front, I'm not too interested. But hey, Troy Deeney has done crazier things than score goals against big teams. Now, for Spurs. Here's my Spurs stand. Don't play them. Uh, the reason you shouldn't play them goes from a lack of clean sheet that's most likely coming because they're really bad at keeping clean sheets. If they do keep a clean sheet, don't be surprised. Obviously, they're Spurs. But at the same time, if they don't keep a clean sheet, don't be surprised because they're Spurs. So you just don't be surprised. No matter what happens here, they could go either way, which lends that to more of a GPP play and... I'm not really interested in them in GPP this slate, especially when you can get Allison at a way safer rate. Uh, so Trippier, yes, you, you can definitely talk me into him. Uh, he's probably the most active and highest floor of the slate. But in terms of uh, the overall expectation from this game, I don't expect a lot from Spurs. A lot of that has to do what Trippier does, which is 90 minute games. A lot of Spurs are not going to see 90 minutes this slate. Erickson's way too cheap from this salary. I think, again, it's another one of those situations where we all know he's too cheap from 8.3K. Is he going to go out and get two goals? Maybe he's done it before, but we just know 8.3K is too cheap for Erickson at home, especially against a team like Watford. In cash this slate since his four, uh, four games, I think you can even get away with taking both Ben Foster and Christian Erickson in the same card, and you're not actually giving up too much in terms of negative EV variance. Um, now... The main reason you can't play a lot of Spurs is their minutes. Uh, Son is going to play whether he starts and plays limited minutes or comes off the bench. He is most likely going to see significant minutes, which means someone's coming off the field or he's coming off the field, which makes him and someone else unviable this slate because on a four-game slate, not getting 90 minutes is absolutely devastating. Uh a lot of this also has to do with the fact that a lot of them don't already play a lot of 90 minute games. So it's really tough to jump on a lot of these players like Mora and Lamea and anyone else really. Like uh, Lorente isn't getting it done. Um, it wouldn't even surprise me this slate to see uh, Vincent Jansen get a shot. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Vincent Jansen, he's a Dutch international. He's actually really touted a couple of years ago and was brought into Spurs and surprise, surprise, Harry Kane got to pout and do his Harry Kane thing and no one else got to play. Uh, and Vincent Jansen was someone who fell into the back burner and was always promised time and never got it because Harry Kane thought he could play 90 minutes of every single game all season, every competition. So don't be surprised if Jansen finally gets a chance here. And if he starts... I probably am going to use him a little bit in GPP and not use Ben Foster at all. Um, but yeah, it, it's tough to know. Again, like if Florente isn't getting it done, they may just take him off at some point for Jansen. Uh, again, ruining Lorente's minutes, ruining your card and your slate if you took him in GPP. And anything else is really unappealing. So Watford are definitely the better DFS options. Are they the better real-life team? No, definitely not. I, I would never suggest that. Uh, but given Spurs' lack of massive ceilings right now, especially up front, and their massive goal output, which I guess is a repeat of ceilings, but in general, their production is just overly down without a significant goal score on the field. Um, it... <sighs> 2-1 Watford. That's really what I'm feeling. I'm trying not to say it. I don't think that's go what's going to happen. But 1-1 one, one, maybe. Uh, I definitely think this is probably going to be the, the lower scoring game. Uh, if Spurs come out and score 4 or something. Again, don't be surprised it's Spurs. But if they come out and only score 1. Don't be surprised because it's Spurs. So yeah. It, a lot of people I think are going to be jumping on Spurs and cash the slate. Which is a huge mistake. They're too unpredictable. And in general, they're not consistent enough in a four-game slate where you can take someone like uh, Salah and just load up on him and Erickson. If you're going to take anyone from Spurs, take Trippier and Erickson and just keep it at that. 
don't try and attack their forwards and don't look for a whole bunch of ceilings because they're just not viable to find. Uh, so I'm going to say 2-2, two, 2-1 two, two, Watford, maybe even 3-2 game, but uh, not another game I see a clean sheet from. If the there is going to be one, though, it, it probably... Uh, I still like Ben Foster a lot more. Sorry. He's still my guy this slate. And only 3.9K. And knowing Spurs is horrible attacking threats right now. And how unviable they'll end up being. It's just really hard not to take Ben Foster. Um, because I just don't see him getting blown out like other keepers. Like whoever born the start and uh, Smichael. And both these keepers, in my opinion, should let in too. Unless it's Angus Gunn. So... Yeah, uh, how should I fill this out for you so you get a good picture? Uh, let's go Salah. Doesn't really leave a lot there. Let's yeah, let's put him in forward. There we go. I think that makes for a really if even if you want to drop uh, Townsend down to someone like uh, take a little bit more risk and go Zaha. We all know Zaha is too cheap in this situation. Uh, so I don't even uh, hate some uh, Wilfred Zaha and cash the slate uh, from his salary. At only 6.1K. Way too cheap. There we go. That's a little bit better. Not really, though. <sighs> Anyways, gives you an idea what I'm looking at. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Uh, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter. Sir Robert Six and all the main sites. Rotopros.com. Get over there. Check it out. 30-day uh, free trial on the go right now. So make sure to jump on and uh, get on our Slack and uh, get some chats in with everyone. So thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Good luck today. Hopefully see you at the top. Uh, and uh, best of luck.